Let's begin our course on differential equations by classifying differential equations and discussing the terminology around differential equations. So what is a differential equation and how does it differ from an algebraic equation, for example? A differential equation is an equation containing the derivatives of one or more unknown functions, the unknown functions being the dependent variables, with respect to one or more independent variables. With differential equations, we're solving for a function as opposed to solving for a point or uh, several points in algebraic equations. An ordinary differential equation, written as ODE often, is a differential equation that contains only ordinary derivatives of one or more unknown functions, the dependent variables, with respect to a single independent variable. Okay, so we have dependent variables, they depend on a single independent variable. That's the crucial part with ordinary differential equations. Now, what's not an ordinary differential equation? It's a partial differential equation, sometimes written PDE. A PDE is a differential equation involving partial derivatives of one or more unknown functions, which are the dependent variables, of two or more independent variables. So that's the crucial difference between an ordinary and a partial differential equation. It's that there are um, more than one independent variables in a system of partial differential equations, whereas there's only a single independent variable um, for ordinary differential equations. So let's look at some examples. Uh, the first one here is this equation, y squared is equal to 2x, y. Is it a differential equation? Do we see any derivatives in there? No. Therefore, it's not a differential equation. Nevertheless, this is an algebraic equation. And what are we asking when we write this? We add, we're asking, what can we substitute in for y so that we get an equality in this equation? And we could straightforwardly see that y equals 0 is a solution or y equals 2x. Of course, we could have solved this simply algebraically by moving uh, the right-hand side to the left, and then factoring out a y. And we'll get these two solutions. And so this tells us that this equation is true if y equals 0 or y is equal to 2x for any x. Okay, So we just solved for two functions there. But it's still not a differential equation because um, we don't have any derivatives. What about this one here? Okay, what is that? It's telling us that the derivative of y needs to equal 2 times x times y. This is a differential equation because we do have a derivative of a function. And we're asking the question here, what is some function y that when I take its derivative with respect to x, I get 2x times that function? And here, y is the dependent variable, x is the independent variable. So, so we look at y as depending on x, and we only have uh, one independent variable, which is x, and one dependent variable here. And so, we do have a differential equation, and you could sort of guess how it would look. So we might guess, we, you know, we see a derivative and it equals some, it's proportional to uh, uh, it's the, the original function y. And so we might guess that it's something like y equals e to the x. But if you plug that in, you get that the derivative is e to the x, and you could see then that e to the x 
does not equal 2x times e to the x. Okay, so that didn't work out. But here you're probably remembering the chain rule, and so we could take a second guess, y equals e to the x squared, and then this would work, okay? The derivative of y is indeed equal to 2x times y, okay? So it fulfills the original differential equation, okay? And here I write a question mark, okay? Because we're checking the equality. And because the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side, then we do indeed have a solution to our differential equation. y equals e to the power x squared does indeed solve this differential equation. And just to expand further here, that we would formally have to be taking the derivative, and so we would get e x squared d dx using the chain rule, which would give us uh, 2x e to the x squared, okay, which is what we see on the right right hand side, the very the, the very far right hand side. So that's how we're checking it. We plug in the uh, function for y in the left hand side. And then we uh, check the right-hand side if we just plug in what our proposed solution is for y. And we do see that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And so this does satisfy the differential equation. Uh, here are some more examples of ordinary differential equations. You could see here we have the derivative with respect to y, one independent variable. And so that is an ordinary differential equation. And here... I'm emphasizing that y is seen as a function of x, okay? y in general is just a symbol. It could be independent variable, dependent variable. It could be part of a relation. Um, but what we're solving for here is y is a function of x. Um, we also see here that uh, this is also a differential equation, ordinary. Again, each of these is presumed to only depend on x. Here we have a higher derivative, so it's a second order differential equation. And what about this one here? Okay, here we have two dependent variables, two dependent variables, x and y. x is seen as a function of t, y is seen as a function of t, but only one independent variable. That independent variable is t. Therefore, this is an ordinary differential equation. Well, what about a partial differential equation? Here we have u. u is seen as a function of x and y. Okay, that's why we take partial derivatives with respect to x and partial derivatives with respect to y. And so uh, this is a partial differential equ equation. And again, we have one, in one dependent variable, which is u, and two independent variables, which is x and y. Uh, what about this one? This one has two dependent variables, u and v, okay, and two independent variables, x and y. Okay, and so this is clearly a partial differential equation because you have more than one independent variable, and you're taking derivatives of it. So let's discuss the notation that's used around differential equations. We have the Leibniz ratio notation, uh, where you just represent the derivative as a ratio dy dx. That's the derivative of the function of y with respect to x. Uh, for higher derivatives, um, we could label an n instead. Okay, and uh, of course we could label the independent variable differently. So here's x with respect to t, okay? So x is, is presumed to be a function with of the independent variable t. Uh, here phi is the dependent variable and y is seen as the 
independent variable and we're taking n derivatives. We also have the Lagrange prime notation where to take um, more and more derivatives of y, you just keep priming. Uh, more than three gets, of course, a little tiresome, so uh, in parentheses, we just write an n. Uh, we could also make, make it explicit that y is a function of the independent variable x here, and likewise x of t, and these two primes mean uh, second derivative. We also have Newton's dot notation, where to take more and more derivatives, you take, um, you put more and more dots on top of the dependent variable. So you could see here x, this is the third derivative of the dependent variable x. And finally, and this is most common with partial differential equations, is that you write a subscript. So this is seen as partial u, partial x, okay? This here is seen as partial u, partial x, and then the, the rightmost subscript y is taken afterwards, okay? So uh, that's how the subscript notation is used, and it's most commonly used for partial differential equations uh, we do use a little bit of partial differential equations, very light um, here, but it's it's uh, worth seeing the this notation. Okay, I will try to avoid this notation and just write uh, the the subscript notation just to avoid any confusion, because uh, it's very easy to think that this subscript is just denoting a specific instance of the uh, variable y. Uh, instead, I will use as much as possible the um, partial derivative notation, and we only take a few partial derivatives here. Uh, so what about the order of a differential equation? The order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative. Okay, that, that's very crucial, the highest derivative. Um, sometimes you'll see, for example, let's classify that differential equation there. Uh, what's the highest power here, you know, in, in terms of polynomials? Well, you know, you see that 3 there. But this is not a third-order differential equation. Absolutely not. It's a second-order differential equation because the highest derivative is second-order. It's a second-order differ differential equation. This is a first-order term. Sure, it's being cubed, but it's still a first-order derivative. And so it's always about what the order, uh, the highest order of derivative. How, how many derivatives do you take? Not how many powers of a derivative do you take? And so this is a second order differential equation. Okay, and uh, let's look at some common forms of differential equations. So there's an implicit, implicit form. And uh, I know that this doesn't, look like it's much, okay, uh, we'll be using implicit forms. Um, here we're just denoting it as f, the, um, the, this, the function that we would input all of these variables into, okay? And so if we want to express a differential equation implicitly, we would just have some function f, which is real valued, but instead of um, just simple variables x, y, z, we actually put in also derivatives in there, okay? And because sometimes it's difficult to, ex to, to explicitly solve for the highest derivative, for example. And so you'll write the differential equation implicitly, and this form is frankly most important in theorems, okay, which we'll encounter a little bit. And so it's, it's nice to know that you could at least represent a differential equation in terms of uh, a real valued function, and we'll see how. We also have normal form, okay? And here, what you do with normal form is you'll solve, you'll have the highest derivative on the left-hand side. So here's the nth derivative. For a second-order differential equation, it would be uh, the second derivative, right? And it's equal to some function of all of these other, x, 
the independent variable and y, y prime, all the way up to y to the n minus 1 derivative, okay? It's not always possible to go from implicit form to this, okay? You have to be able to explicitly solve for the highest derivative, and that's not always possible. And so that's why it's nice to at least mention that you do have differential equations in implicit form, especially when you're trying to prove theorems in the most general way about differential equations. For first order differential equations, so let's zoom in on first order differential equations, we could represent uh, differential equations in differential form. Okay, this dx is and, and dy, they're basically differential forms. Uh, you could view them symbolically, okay? So you could just look at this as a formal, uh, uh, formal syntax, okay? And you could work with it formally. So, for example, here, what we could do if we wanted to put this in normal form, you could say, okay, well, n dy then is equal to negative m dx. We just moved um, the, the uh, m dx to the other side. And then you could divide by dx. And so that cancels. And you, and, and you could also divide by m or uh, we'll divide by n, okay? And we end up getting dy dx is equal to negative m over n, which is a function of xy, uh, on the right-hand side, okay? And so now we converted this uh, differential form into the normal form. Um, of course, dividing by dx, I told you to just deal with it symbolically, but it turns out for a lot of functions, you could just do that. Okay, you could take that differential form and just divide by dx as if it was uh, some variable, and it works out. Uh, something to pay attention to here is that, you know, dividing by dx is generally not a problem in the functions that we're dealing with, but dividing by n could be because n could be zero, okay? And if it's zero for some x or y, then you can't divide by n, and so we might there end up neglecting some solution. So something to keep in mind. Uh, we'll also see when we get into linear first-order differential equations that uh, this form here will be called standard form, where you have the first-order derivative, some px, some function of x, okay, times y is equal to some function f of x. Okay, this is called standard form. And we'll be using that, uh, especially when we discuss linear equations in for first-order differential equations. So let's look at some concrete examples of going back and forth from differential form. So here we see uh, this expression here, this equation. We want to put it in normal form. We basically follow this algorithm that I did uh, generally, but this time with specific uh, values for m and n. And uh, of course, we'll divide by dx. And then we'll get our dy dx that way. Uh, and then we uh, move y minus x to the other side, which becomes x minus y. If you move both to the other side and you'll divide by 4x, and you basically get this expression right here. And we just now converted the differential form of this specific differential equation into normal form. Uh, what about going in reverse? Well, here goes our... Um, a differential equation here. Uh, it's not even in standard form, but uh, or normal form, but we still could put it in differential form. So how do we do that? We could multiply both sides of this differential equation by dx and distribute. Once we do that, we get rid of this dx, and now we have a dx term there, and it's just as simple as that, okay? So now you have x squared plus y squared dx plus xy dy, and there goes our differential form. 
But the important thing here is to not be intimidated when you see the differential form. It's really uh, not profoundly different for our purposes. Uh, for us, it's just more of a formal syntactic difference. All right, what about linearity? Linearity is a very important concept when you talk about differential equations, any differential equations, ordinary, partial. It's super important to think about linearity, okay? And so let's define it. An nth order ordinary differential equation, and you know here for our theorems we're writing this implicitly, uh, is said to be linear if f is linear in these variables, okay? That is, the ODE may be written as in this form right here, okay? Uh, a function is linear if, of course, you know, f of x plus y equals f of x plus fy, f of uh, a times x, where a is a constant, is equal to a f x. Uh, that looks a little bit complicated, so we just write it explicitly. As long as you could write the differ differential equation in this form. So you take the highest order derivative and multiply it by some function, a sub n. So here this, this coefficient is seen as a function of what? A function of the independent variable, okay? And you keep doing this. Uh, and you, you're also allowed to have a function of the independent variable on the right-hand side, okay? So how I like to check for linearity, because th this, th it's, it's not always so obvious if a differential equation is, is linear, is, it, is if you could factor out a y, okay? If you could factor out a y from the left-hand side and have an expression that just depends on x on the right-hand side, then it's linear, okay? And here's what I mean by factoring out a y. We could pull this y and look at these as operators, okay? So this is an operator that acts on y, and so you could distribute this y and end up back here, okay? So if I see a complicated expression, I try to see if I could factor out y and have this operator only depend on x and have the right-hand side only depend on x. If I can, then the, uh, the differential equation is linear. So two important characteristics of linear equation, the dependent variable y and all its derivatives are of uh, first degree. That is, the power of each term involving y is 1. Okay, so you, you don't get, so if, if y is the dependent variable, you don't get something like y squared. Uh, you don't get something like cosine y, okay? or e to the y, uh, you only have y to the power 1. And these coefficients that you see here depend at most on the independent variable x. So of course, they can't depend on uh, y. Okay, So that's, that characterizes linear equations. And just a quick word on linear equations, we have powerful theorems that give us all the solutions to linear equations, okay? So we, we have a lot of uniqueness and existence theorems for linear equations, and we could easily characterize their solutions. Nonlinear, nonlinear, all bets are off, okay? We don't have the same kind of powerful theorems, and sometimes, you know, solutions pop up where we don't expect them, and so uh, it's, you have to grapple with nonlinear equations. And so what is a nonlinear equation? A nonlinear equation is, well, an ordinary differential equation that is not linear, okay? Again, we're, we're, this is our first session of the course, and we are formally defining every single term just so we're clear on the language. All right, so let's work to classify the differential equations that we see here. Uh, so we could rewrite A in terms of the sort of Y prime notation. And uh, it's pretty straightforward to see that it's ordinary. We don't have a Y squared or E to the Y or 
okay? Uh, this is also a, the highest derivative is the first derivative, so it's a, it's a first order differential equation. Um, and it's ordinary, of course, because there's only a um, dependent variable. And, and, you know, just to kind of point out what I mean by you could factor out the uh, uh, operation, you could factor out a y, let's do that here. So I could re rewrite this as 4x d dx plus uh, 1 times y is equal to x, okay? And so notice, y is only showing up over here, okay? All of this depends on x, and the right-hand side depends on x. It's linear, okay? So if you ever get confused, then just apply that test. Uh, what about b? b is also clearly linear. You could do the same thing, except uh, here you would have this operation, d squared dx squared minus 2 d dx plus 1 y is equal to 0, okay? It's on the right-hand side, 0. But notice how we factor out that y, and nothing in, in the square brackets depend on y. Uh, this is for b. Uh, what about c? Is c a, a linear equation? Uh, and, and by the way, b is a second order because the highest derivative is second order, okay? And ordinary because we only have one independent variable. What about c? Well, again, uh, this is, the highest derivative is 3, so this is a third order differential equation. Uh, Definitely looks linear. We don't see any y squared or anything like that. And uh, the right-hand side is nonlinear, but it's nonlinear in x. Our dependent variable here is, uh, is y. And so we can, this is linear, we would be able to write the operator on y as x cubed d cubed dx cubed plus x d dx minus 5, okay? And it's all right if this, you know, if you had 5 times x squared or something, there's, that's not a problem. As long as what's in the square brackets depend only on x and on what's on the right hand depends only on x. <clears throat> all right, let's take a look at more examples then. So, uh, what about A? All right, well, let's work with that a little bit. Let's try to do this trick of factoring out A, and let's see how it'll fail, okay? So we have 1 minus Y D DX plus 2, okay, is equal to e to the x. And you could see there's really no way to get rid of that y. I mean, we could keep going and, and trying some things. For example, if I distribute that uh, derivative, I would have minus y d dx plus 2. But unfortunately, you know, Unfortunately, I still have that y there that I'm just not going to be able to get rid of it, okay? If I try to factor it out of that term, I end up getting a 1 over y somewhere else. And what's important, too, I, to, to mention with this um, factor notation that I'm using for operators is uh, operating on the left is not the same as operating on the right. So you're taking derivatives of everything that is to the right of the derivative, not to the left. So, but still, I could have tried to, say, factor this to the left, but that would leave me with uh, 1 over y. And so, this term here in particular, if we distribute this y prime, that's the nonlinear term, okay? So, it's, and, and that's another important lesson is that 
for nonlinearity, you don't have to have, you know, y prime cubed. You could have y prime times uh, y triple prime. Okay, so you could have sort of mixed order derivatives being multiplied together for the dependent variable and, and get nonlinearity. Okay, uh, so that's a very important lesson there to notice about nonlinearity. You don't just have to have a polynomial of the same order derivative. Uh, it is ordinary, okay, it just depends on x, and it's first order because that's the highest derivative. What about this guy? Okay, now please don't do this. I was saying, hey, you know, I can just, that doesn't make sense, okay, you can't factor out. Uh, a y from the sign. Okay, so that doesn't that doesn't make any sense at all. All right, there's no way to factor out that y from the sign. Sign is not simply an operator. I mean, to convince yourself of that, uh, just look at y plus sine times y. Okay, uh, and just plug in some values for that. It's not the same as uh, one plus sine, where you then distribute that y. Okay. It, 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 it doesn't even work. It doesn't make any sense at all to to uh, talk about that. So you can't just factor out that y and, and pretend like, uh, uh, you know, you could just distribute it into the sign. It doesn't work like that. A sign is not a linear operator, okay? That, that's the core of why that doesn't work. So sine of x plus y is, is not equal to sine of x plus sine of y. And so, mm, this is second order, because the highest derivative is uh, second order derivative. And our nonlinearity is all coming from that sine of y. Okay, it's a nonlinear function, no way to just factor out the y, and so that's nonlinear. And finally, this is nonlinear because of the y squared term. Again, if you tried to factor out a y, you would get... Um, d to the fourth, dx to the fourth, plus y times y. Okay, so all of this, the left-hand side is operating on this y, but we still have this y that we just can't get rid of. There's no way around that, okay? And so this is nonlinear. It's fourth order because the highest derivative is fourth order. All right. Uh, let's talk about systems of differential equations. So we, we said that ordinary differential equations have one independent variable, but they could have several dependent variables, okay? And you could have multiple equations characterizing how those dependent variables change. So it's very common, for example, to get a system of equations. So a system of ordinary differential equations is two or more equations involving the derivatives of two or more unknown functions of a single independent variable. Of course, partial you could get a par system of partial differential equations where you have um, multiple independent variables. But uh, let's focus on just systems of ordinary differential equations. Uh, you'll have, you could write them in, if you could write them in normal form, where the highest derivative could be just put on the isolated into the left-hand side, you would write them like this, okay? Uh, so, for example, just to kind of make something up here, dx dt is equal to tx plus y, and dy dt is equal to ty plus x, okay? That's a system. And what is that telling us? Well, we said that for a differential equation, we're asking the question, what function y can I plug into the equation so that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side? Well, now we have to go uh, extra step with systems. We have to say, 
what functions for y and x that when I plug them into both equations, it satisfies both of the equations, okay? And so, uh, and of course here we put them in normal form, and so we must solve, to get a solution we have to solve both equations simultaneously. 